Hi, Tech Rebel here. Yeah, I'm just going to do another Raspberry Pi unboxing. So anyway, what is a Raspberry Pi? Well, I think we'd take a little look at it and um, have a bit of discussions around it. I mean, Raspberry Pi has been around for years. Um, the Roxbury Foundation that develops it has been um, incrementally improving it, making it faster with every um, major release. And um, let's switch to have a look at it. This is the, and I'm going to put all the URLs in the in the description. But here is the main page of the um, Raspberry Foundation, um, and um, as they say here, it's a you know it's um, a small general-purpose desktop computer, so of course. And, um, What's very interesting with this is that over the years it's coming, it's catching up with um, what one would define as uh, a useful level of computing, so that you can actually use this for uh, real tasks. And um, currently, I, I would say, well, you know, the, the, this incarnation on the, the Raspberry Pi 4 is um, getting there very much. So the processor speed is big enough, and um, the memory capacity is getting large enough so that one can actually talk about this as a as something on a true desktop computer. But anyway, let's have a look at the more about the um, a little bit more about the specifications for the unit. We're going to have a look at. So this is what it looks like. Um, I'm going to sort of like generalize a few things. Um, uh, start with the processor. So this is a processor running the ARM architecture. Um, it's a system on chip solution. And this is where it gets interesting that you can have one, two, or four gigabytes of um, quite fast memory. This is DDR4 3200 um, SD RAM, so that's not anything to laugh at. So I have the, uh, I ha we're going to have a little look at the um, 4 gig version. And then it has um, dual band wireless integrated with also Bluetooth 5.0. Uh, gigabit Ethernet port, which is there, and um, intra uh, two USB 3.0 ports, and uh, and then a, um, a USB 2.0 port. As a yeah, the, this is common to all Raspberry Pi iteration. It has this um, connection header where you can connect in different things. Now what differentiates this from previous generations is that it actually has two HDMI output ports and they're implemented as this micro HDMI ports. You don't often see that if you've only been dealing with PCs but on, on, on cameras and stuff it's quite common to have the um, micro, micro um, HDMI version of the connector. But it can actually, it can power two displays. Uh, it's got a camera, two lane camera port. So you can connect the Raspberry Pi camera to it. Anything else? Um, it's got sound, but that comes through HDMI or um, as a separate audio output. And this is in the OpenGL ES 3.0 graphics. And this, of course, a little bit depends on what, uh, what system you're going to run on this because it actually doesn't come with any operating system, as we'll see a little bit later. Then it has a micro SD card slot, 
uploading operating systems and storing data. Uh, I have the slot. Oh, they actually included in the diagram. Oh, that's interesting. But it's a, it's a, um, yeah, it's a micro SD card slot. It's, uh, I think it was under, it's under this, this end here, just underneath. Uh, 5 volt via USB C connector, minimum 3 amps. So it's powered by a USB C power supply, and, and this can be a bit tricky to find a power supply, a USB C power supply um, that produces 3 amps or more. So uh, the one I have is 2.5 amps, it'll be good enough to boot it up. but you know, that needs something a bit more powerful. Um, I actually didn't. They had some at the place where I picked this up, but I forgot to um, to buy it. So two and a half. It'll be anything else? No oh, power over Ethernet. Yeah, it actually says that it could supply a good quality to an up um, amp power supply can be used to down, downstream USB profits consumes less than 500 milliamps in total. So, yeah. so the <laughs> minimum boot up current is like 2 amps. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know, the, the, the power usage is creeping up a bit, you know. It used, it used to be you could run it on a 1 amp power supply, the older versions, but not, not this anymore. So, uh, it indicates the increase in power. Um, then when we're talking about the SD card for different systems, I'll just get the link here. So, so here you have different downloads. So usually when um, when you want to put an operating, uh, like a general purpose operating system, then uh, you take the so-called Raspbian image, which is a variant of Debian. Or you can use the Noobs um, SD card. Now Noobs is a sub-collection of different systems. So you can actually choose from a menu what you want to install. And you can even install parallel versions. So you can install, as much, uh, depending on how big your SD card is, you can put more than one system. And then down here, what makes it interesting that you can have um, third-party operating system images, uh, all kinds of different things, you know, Ubuntu, um, um, Microsoft, IoT Core, lots of that. Uh, I mean, this list is uh, the the list of available SD card images is not only restricted to here. Here is just a very small subset. I mean, if you go on the internet and start searching, you'll find lots of different pre-made images so that you, you could actually you don't have to care about the you you could well basically what you have to think you know I mean, what do you want to do do you want a, like a media do you want to run a media output device or uh, a, an embedded iot system to do certain things then you have to like then you can just search the internet with those parameters and see if there's already made system or subsystem that you could actually just um, put on the SD card and, uh, and use. And um, what we're going to be looking at is um, noobs. It's this one. So as you see, a different type of subsystems that you can install for different purposes. And um, when you get the SD card, it needs to be formatted. Um, there are uh, different programs to format SD cards, and I put the links in the in, in, in the description also. So, you, so when you get the SD card, um, 32 gig is my recommendation for the basic one, and then um, you have to format it with a format program. And um, 
basically what you do is that then you download the image um, that you want to use and then you unpack the files and just copy them to the SD card. So here I've already done it. So that's what that looks like. And I mean, what makes this evolution of the Raspberry Pi so interesting is, that, as I said, it's, it's close in, in terms of power. It's closing on to being a, a useful desktop computing device in its own. Uh, it used to be that you could only use it for specific tasks or, you know, as, as a slow computer. But um, now, now it's actually getting like four gigs of RAM, fast processor, you know, support for gigabit ethernet usb3 you know, it's, it's 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 getting there <laughs> and it's not that expensive so, i mean as, as a single board computer solution you know, a generic computer and uh, and um I, it's it's so common i mean it's 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 a like an institution so, so the support for it is quite fantastic either directly from the Raspberry Foundation or, or through um, third parties. Um, let's see if we take this one. So here we see and I got the basic package and to be able to run this um, then you need a USB power supply with a USB C connector. Oops, I have to show it correct there. And an HDMI, a monitor to connect it to an HDMI monitor with the micro HDMI adapter. Uh, you need a standard mouse and a keyboard. Now, uh, with a mouse and keyboard, you don't need it in some setups like. Uh, like if you download a pre predefined image that's supposed to do only one task, then maybe it doesn't even have any user interface. Maybe you just install the uh, or just put in the SD card and then it does what it's supposed to do. Uh, or you run it completely remotely, so you can actually remote control the desktop. But anyway, for this demo, I'm going to um, just use just that. Um, This one, because I have a mini cam here, so I can actually take a closer look at this. Just fix it so I can also see the picture. Ah, I haven't been able to open this until now. I haven't cheated. It's like anti-static stuff. No. Don't don't ruin the board. <laughs> side and this is what they didn't have in the diagram there's the SD card slot so I just have to um, yeah the next thing I have to go and grab the SD card because I actually didn't have it here 
I'll use the magic orb. So, so I have one of these SD cord adapters for having it in, plugging it into the PC. This has got to be the cheapest one ever. So the actual SD card. Hoping it's focusing. And, um, this is the 32. I think I had the 32. Yep. So, and then we just um, insert it in here. You can use any mouse, this is a way too expensive mouse to use on this kind of thing. The only free one I have hanging around. So, just plug, plug that in there. Let's go in the mouse. I don't have a wireless one extra. So, so that's in there. Play into whatever port, probably doesn't matter. And then I need to switch to the going to switch to the display. It should theoretically show the boot picture, so that'll be this one. And then we'll see what happens when I apply the power. If it doesn't boot up, then I will have to do diagnostics. That's the capture card, not <laughs> not the Raspberry Pi. <gasps> okay, well, that went fast. Now this is noob starting up, so it's the default. So okay, so this noobs seems to only contain two options interesting has raspian got so big oh, it's been a while since i've installed directly from the noobs, image, the noobs images that i used have been looking at they had my, a lot more options but anyway it doesn't matter um yeah when you see the mouse seems to be working and the keyboard i can't really test I don't think if I could move down. Yeah, oh, look, the keyboard seems to work. So that's good. Um, now maybe we could have a look just here to see it working. Because then I could just take the mouse. Is me and then uh, I mean it doesn't do <laughs> computers they usually don't do but I mean it has a, has a has these two LEDs here so you can see in the corner so that's one's red and then there's a green one and then they flash a bit before it starts so let's go back to the one camera okay so now we have what are this for 
to try to install this one. So this isn't going to be a full feature tutorial and I'll probably pause this while it's installing just to use the magical video so you don't have to hang around and wait. So anyway, uh, so this is how you would do it. So you have noobs installed and you decided, okay, you want to have a general purpose operating system on the system. And then you just say install and then it warns that um, all existing data will be lost. But we don't care too much about. Okay, so this will take a while, so I'm going to um, come back when it's um, completed. So now it's coming to an end. Okay, um, it's known that in, uh, in the Raspberry 4 that um, the chipset and pro processors get, um, or processor gets very hot, so uh, it's recommended to add some kind of extra cooling to this. It's a very big aftermarket. You can get everything, uh, everything from simple passive heating, uh, heat sinks to heat sinks with fans. But as I, and that's recommended if one's going to do any serious kind of usage of it. Compared to the previous Raspberry Pi versions where you could pretty much get away without having any cooling. Actually, probably going to buy one of those um, heat sinks with a fan, small fan, or I'll buy and build one myself. So, oh yeah, it's installed. Let's do a reboot. Oh, this is from the capture card. Ah, four Raspberry Pis. No, or four four. Raspberry pictures, that means it's four cores. Usually starts, you know, or it takes a longer time for it to start the first time. Wow, it thinks the display is really big. Ah, okay, because the capture card I'm using reports itself as a 4K device. And, um, so that's the interesting problem. So let me end up with really small text on my display. Just a sec. <laughs> Uh, it thinks it's running on a real 4K uh, monitor, which it isn't, so I can't really see what it's coming up with. It. Interesting. Okay, what do we have here? No, country is not 
That's been changed a bit. And then the password. So, I'll just set up a new password for this. So we just keep it like that on the capture board. Oh, the Wi-Fi up. <laughs> I wonder how we can get the picture resize when I'm using the capture program. Oh, that'll be a mystery for another day. Okay. Look that one up. So, there's that one. And then update the software. Yep. What? No network connection found. Oh no. I'm going to restart it and see if it connects to the network. I'm not too worried about it not connecting to the network. My Wi Fi router can sometimes refuse to um, connect devices. So. That's not right. I'm blaming the Raspberry Pi if it doesn't connect. Okay, that's the desktop. And um did want to show just a few the application menu here, but I think it's gonna be too small text. But I mean you do get a assortment of applications that are delivered with it. You get um, several different environments for programming, both on like a picture level, like using diagrams and stuff and then classical programming tools. Uh, it's, a, it's a pity to actually recognize the, um, but it is a 4K capture card module, so it's, it's actually thinking it has a 4K monitor. <laughs> package, Chromium internet browser and stuff, DLC media player, graphics, some Minecraft is always included, yeah, Python games, a bunch of accessories, you know, help access to general help access, 
and then preferences. So you can actually you know, continue configuring. Ah, maybe we should actually try and change the resolution. Because this is for the capture card, this is getting a bit ridiculous. Okay, so how do we use this then? Oh, look. So I'm just going to drop it down to something more reasonable. Let's see. Let's see what that would look like. Okay, didn't immediately change it. see what happens yes that's a lot better well that was easy yes the thing is i haven't used the latest deviant version so um, no what did it switch back for did i miss to press confirm let's see okay did i do something wrong Try this again, it's a little hard. Drop it down to full HD and stuff. And then it was apply. Okay. And then we saw it. That's strange. Okay, I'm going to move myself over here. Now let's try it again. Thinking the confirmation window pops up there. I know this is probably boring. I might edit this out. But it's an inter academic interesting academic exercise and it's good one can see this uh, the setting program for the display okay then we have that else to press apply okay ah there we go ah come on give me a chance okay that was hidden behind the the, the display that sucks. Okay, yeah, so we moved it here, then it was hidden under, under this webcam display. Okay, but anyway, now we got a little bit more reasonable screen sized screen resolution. I can actually move myself back here. So, there. Okay, now we can maybe just have a look here. So, what do we got for programming? some pure Java genie don't really know what that is green foot Java another Java form Mathematica well that's Mathematica Python editor for beginner programmers yeah this is the basic Python program no it is actually quite interesting to like build programs using um, modules scratch now oh, this is animation Programming with animation. Could I everything up to scratch three? Oh, that's interesting. Uh, it's of all those. Uh, sensor hat. Oh, this is good. There's a sensor hat. I actually have one. It contains different things, um, like a, um, a lead matrix and, and all other things. I could recommend getting this. Yeah, it's actually quite nice to learn. Oh, I wonder where I, if I can take it out quick. Oh, I just don't know where I actually... No, nope, it'll take too long to find. Sonic Pi's music generation. 
This is another Python editor. Wolfram technical programming world. Okay. That was the office internet for Chrome. Sounds. Graphics. Games. I think I'm going to have to go through this myself. Okay. So, anyway, that was a brief display and discussion of um, Raspberry Pi 4. Um, and the basic Raspbian is, as I said, there are many images you can use, so you don't have to use Raspbian if you don't want. If you don't want to use it for general computing, you can just download a dedicated um, system and put it on the SD card and just boot it up like I displayed it, and then you can continue. Uh, anything else to say? Yeah, cooling is needed. can recommend that. I'm going to get some myself. Maybe I'll make a separate small video about it. Okay, so if you um, like this one, consider subscribing. Uh, if you subscribe, then press the bell to get notifications on new ones. And um, yeah, see you in the next one. Boy, too many mice.